right now. That's for somebody else. Hey, bud, how you doing? I love your hair. Thank you. Did, I'm having a great day. Thank you for asking. Can I give you a high five? Yes! <laughs> okay, come on up. There's some right there. Do you want to kill the lights? 
to the lights. <laughs> Just start hitting things. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, how are you guys doing? Good. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah. Woo, there we go. Well, we need that one back on, actually. Yeah, there you go. Uh, welcome to church. It's so good to see you. So good to see all of you. Um, this is the proof that she's a mother. Uh, and uh, so we are going to keep the kids upstairs for worship this morning. Uh, we just, we love them and we want to see them. And uh, if you would in mind, stand up with me. We're going to pray. We're going to start worshiping the Lord together. It is a good day to worship God. Amen. Amen. It's a good day to worship the Lord. That's right. Let's, Debbie's back. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for today. God, we thank you so much for Mother's Day. Lord, we just praise your name. We ask that this morning, God, that our praises would go up before you and that we would worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord, for all the good things that you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's worship the Lord together. Come on now, girl. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy Lord, I 
I worship your holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. I will worship your holy name. Lord, I worship your holy name. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you that we can come together to just worship you, Lord. We, uh, no matter what our motivation for the week has been, Lord, just help us to focus on you right now. Help us to just set everything else aside and just be with you, Lord. And so we just thank you for who you are. Oh 
abounds in deepest waters your sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fear surrounds me Oceans rise, my soul will rest in your 
powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, your name is powerful. Lord, your name is mighty and wonderful. We just speak the name of Jesus over this place. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Jesus over our families. Jesus over our communities and over our nation, O oh Lord. Lord, your name is above all names. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy, God. You are worthy. Amen. I love in that song where it says, you have no rival. You have no equal. Did you know that? He's got no rival. God's not up there rubbing his hands together wondering what's going to happen. No, he is the powerful one. And we are so grateful and, and glad that he has chosen us and given his love to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you turn to somebody around you and say it is good to see you today. Happy Mother's Day. If you've got a mother around you, say happy Mother's Day to them. Well, it's that time again, the time that we celebrate all the wonderful women that helped us be all we can be. I'm talking about moms. So moms... M is for the many things she gave me. Hey, 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 hello. What, what you doing? What you doing? I just thought we might do a song for the moms for Mother's Day. Hi, moms. Hi. 
Hi, Mommy. This is for you, Mommy. M is for the many things she gave. We get it. We get it. M is for the many things she gave us. We get it. That's very cute. That's very well, cute. you're pretty quick for a bald guy. Everyone join in. Oh, means that. I out. just thought that we'd do a heartwarming message for all the moms out there instead of a campy little song. Oh, means that I owe her all I Okay, own. okay, okay, okay. You do it your way. I will do it my way. Moms, we owe you so much. Thank you for being she there. She is for tender, sweet caresses. H is for her hands that made a home, you've made a home, you've made a home, home on the range. Okay, stop it. She did make a home on the range. You probably called it like a stove, but we had a range at my house. And she made that house. word home, oh, that means so much. We still long to be in your presence. We still long for you to be proud of us. And yes, we still long to come home. Okay, this isn't working. What? No, no, no. You, you're faking it. I am not. You're forcing the no, tears. No, it's real. No, no, no. This does not work in any way. Oh, this works. The song works. This does not work. I just thought we'd speak from the heart. That's what moms <sighs> want. You know what? Mom always liked you best anyway. <laughs> we don't even have the same mom. He's everything you've done to help me. Like that time you helped me find my shoes in first grade and in college. And there was that time also that uh, Tammy Cornball broke up with me. Crazy last name, right? But she was really a sweet girl until she broke up with me. And I was sad, but you made me feel better. You brought in some chocolate chip cookies and some milk and you made, you know what? What can make me feel this way, mother? Talking about my mom, mommy. Uh. And R stands for right. And right you always shall be, right in our eyes, right with the values that you instilled in us so sacrificially, and right in how you taught us to love God and love others. And so, mothers, today we say to you... Move them all together, they spell mother, the word that means the world to me. The word that means the world to mama. cry when I said I didn't like your meatloaf when I was five it's not my fault it needed salt but that doesn't really matter happy Mother's Day happy Mother's Day happy Mother's Day happy Mother's Day <laughs> all right Hey, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, if you are a child under the age of 12, come on down. We're going to pray for you, and we're going to send you downstairs. We got some fun stuff planned for you down there. Come on down, kids. Would you stretch your hands this way as we pray for our kids? Lord, we thank you for all of these kids. We thank you for every single one of them. Every one of them is just a precious gift, Lord. And we pray that you would be with them this morning, be with their teachers, teach them lots about you, and help them have a lot of fun. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Go for it, guys. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> awesome. Hey, happy Mother's Day. Uh, I have a few announcements I want to just throw at you real quick, and then we're going to dive into some Mother's Day stuff. Um, but a few announcements that I want you to be aware of. Tomorrow at 1130, we're going to have a Bible study downstairs. Now that Miss Debbie is back, we're so happy that she's back with us. Uh, she's going to be leading a women's, yeah. She's leading a women's Bible study tomorrow at 1130 downstairs. So uh, all the ladies are invited to come out for that. Um, also, this coming Wednesday, we are inviting, uh, we have 50 days of prayer going on right now through different uh, churches in town leading up into Pentecost. Uh, and this Wednesday, we're hosting a prayer meeting here downstairs for all the churches in town. Oh, it's okay. Oh, no. Oh, my baby. Uh, for all the churches in town. So you are invited as well. So we're going to be downstairs uh, this Wednesday at 6 o'clock. I believe it's 6 o'clock. Is that right? I think it's 6 o'clock. My secretary just walked out the door, so I'm not sure. Um, but I come out, and, and hopefully we'll see some people from other churches coming out too. And if you want to know, it's 6.30. Thank you. It's 6.30. Uh, and if you want to know where other prayer events are being held, there is in the back, uh, just as you're leaving, a flyer that has a list of where everybody's going to be at different churches, uh, again, leading up to Pentecost. So if you wanted to go check out uh, another prayer service, another church, you're very much invited to do that. Um, so that is this Wednesday. And then um, 
The last thing is that at the end of this month, we get to say au revoir to our ladies. They are going on a retreat for a few days, and we are going to have a mission Sunday. Um, and that is the last Sunday of this month because it's a fifth Sunday. So if you haven't been here for one of those, uh, basically we turn the service over to our missions department. And we have really, I'm so super excited about our guest uh, because we are having Pastor Ben Baker from the Church of Christ uh, who served as a uh, missionary in Mexico for a number of years, met his wife there and, and got married. Um, and he's going to come and talk about his time and also his sister-in-law is just starting on her missions uh, program. So we get to hear about that. We get to hear from him and updates from our missions programs as well. That's in this month. But ladies, you're going to be out of town. If you uh, need any information about the women's retreat, Amy has an, a handout that we're going to give out to you. So make sure that you t- connect with Amy before you leave church today. All right. Now, I think that that's it for the announcements. So, so I'm moving on. Okay, so... Welcome to Mother's Day. What we wanted to do really quickly, uh, as sort of just an informal, impromptu thing, uh, is to ask for uh, if there's people here who would like to share some stories or some uh, thoughts or some reminiscences about their mothers, positive ones, only positive ones. <laughs> for Mother's Day, um, and so we're going to ask if you wanted to, if you would, if you're going to put, you could put your hand up, and we'll pass you a microphone briefly and audibly. Uh, let us know what is it that makes your mom special. It could be your biological mom, could be a stepmom, could be a spiritual mom or a grandma. And we're going to start it off with Kayla. Kayla's going to come up, and she is going to talk to us about a mom in her life. Two, mainly one. Two, mainly one. <laughs> and she's not here. No, she's not here she's right not now. She's here, so I'm hoping that if it's being recorded. It is recorded, okay. so, so she'll be able to hear it. She'll be able to hear it and watch it. Um, it's about Christy Michelson, if you don't already know. Yeah. <laughs> she is my godmom, and without her, I really honestly don't think I'd be here. Mm. I gave up on God a lot in my life. And two years, two years? I've been here two years? Mm -hmm. So two years ago, I I walked in her church and sat down. And I've been, literally, I think I've been to like every church in this town. And I walked in, I sat down, and I just was thinking to myself, this is really weird. I don't think, I don't know if I'm going to fit in here. And... As I was sitting there looking around, everybody saying hi to everybody, I saw Christy walk by, and that face I would not ever forget, because when I was six years old, she taught me how to swim. (laughs) So she taught me how to swim, and I've never forgot her face. And so I kept coming back, because I was so scared to say hi and ask her if she really was the person I thought she was. And I finally got the courage to ask her if she was Christy. And she said, yes. And I was like, do you remember me? And she goes, oh, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and ever since then, I've, I've came back. And she made me realize that things happen for a reason. And, you know, not to, it's not God's fault. Mm. It's not. It's not his fault. Things happen. Things happen because that's just the way cards were dealt. Um, I love my biological mom. She's amazing. She does a lot for me when it comes to my kids and just being there. Um, But spiritually, I don't think I'd be here physically without Christy. Mm. So if she's watching, I love you, Christy. You're more than just a god mom to me. So. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We have Chrissy Davis with the microphone. Would you like to share a story or a, a reflection on mothers? Raise your hand. Couple over here. And introduce yourself too, um, in case people don't know who you are. I'm Betty. I have a crazy enough voice. <laughs> it's for the uh, online world, though. Yeah. I know, it's all being published, yeah. I'm Betty Savini, 
And uh, my mother died in 1974 at the age of 57. She was a woman of God. She was an amazing influence on everyone who knew her. I still miss her to this day. And when I have girlfriends especially, when I have friends who say, you know, they kind of complain about their mom, not that anybody does that, but I will say to them, eyeball to eyeball, I would give anything I own, anything, mm. to have one day with my mom. Mm. And I really do mean that. You never stop missing your mom. You know they're with you when you give birth, when you get married. She would have adored my husband. It's those things. So when you have a chance, mend the fences, mm. forget the insult or whatever, however you took it, and just love your mom mm. because you will not always have her and you will always miss her. Thank you, Patty. Yeah. I had. Uh, Who are you? Oh, I'm, I'm Debbie <laughs> Warthen. Hi, I'm Debbie. Praise the Lord. I get to be <laughs> back here in my church family. And um, I just want to thank God. I, I had uh, a godly mom and a grandma that was really influenced me both. My grandmother and mom both taught me what true forgiveness is mm. when people hurt you. Mm. Uh, when, uh, when my uncle died in a car accident and my grandma forgave the guy who killed him and wow. said, you know, the Lord will be with you and take care of you, you know. And I really learned what forgiveness was from both these women because they say when the bottom line is, it's to forgive and to love, mm. you know. People will hurt you. People will disappoint you. Keep your eyes on Jesus, forgive, and love. And that's what they taught me. Yeah. Wow. That's good. I'm Donna Cito, and I have had three moms. Mm. I was put up for adoption by my birth mom when she was 19. And um, my mama that raised me was somebody who had kids because that's what you did. It wasn't something she really wanted. <laughs> we had some pretty intense years. <laughs> and uh, I guess I was a perfect child until I started school, and then it was all downhill for a long time. <laughs> and, uh, but as adults, the Lord did some very sweet things. And, and um, you were talking about missing your mom. There was a season when my son was growing up where my mom would call and leave a message, and I'd say, ah, I'll get back to her. And it could be two or three weeks before I get back to her. She lived in the same town. And Kim finally scolded me, my husband scolded me one day because he lost both his parents when he was in his 20s. And he said, she's going to be gone one of these days and you're going to really regret that you didn't get mm. back to her. And so what we started doing at that point was once a week we'd have a dinner, Mama and I, we would go out to dinner, even if it was just a cheapo. And uh, we did that until her end. Wow. Um, I lost her, it, uh, she was 80, just turned 89 wow. uh, in 2010 when I lost her. My second mom was Betty Lilia Holm. Mm. She was my spiritual mama, and she mentored me out of the world, and I, and I was a mess. <laughs> and a year or two into my salvation, I ended up pregnant because <laughs> um, I'd gone down a little rabbit hole, and um, I decided I'd put the baby up for adoption, but there weren't cell phones in those days. <laughs> so when I found out, I, and I didn't drive, so I walked to the closest pay phone, and I, she was the first one that I mm. called. And I heard this long pause on the other side, and I knew she was going, okay, am I going to walk through this with this girl? And she did. And I was in my mid to late 20s. I mean, mm. I wasn't a spring, you know, I mean, I wasn't a teenager anymore. But she walked through it with me, um, she and Tom, and she, she taught me how to, be, how to be a Christian mom mm. or a woman. I mean, she mentored me for years. Mm. And then I've reconnected with my birth mother, and we met up in 1992, and she's still alive up in Washington, but now I get to, I, for the last year, I get to go see her once a month. I go up and spend a weekend with her. Uh, she's in late stages of COPD, mm. but she finally, a year or so ago, asked for help for the first time ever. Wow. And so now, whether she needs help with anything or not, I just go up there. Yeah. And the Lord is allowing us to have a relationship, and she knows Jesus. And um, the Lord is allowing us to have a relationship, have, you, have a second chance at something. Mm. And uh, Mama had met her and loved her and, and was happy for her. So it's not like I was looking for something else. But I had a Mama, I had Betty, and now I have Mom. And I feel very blessed and mm. enriched by it all. Amen. 
Thank you. <laughs> Who else? There's some hands over here. Um, <clears throat> my name is Sue Lapierre, and my mother's name was Mary. Um, she died in 1980. I was 25, so um, I understand what you're saying about you just, it's hard to hear people put down their moms and you go, okay, I wish I could be my mom mm. and be with her. But she was the epitome of grace, <coughs> kindness, mm. um, generosity, and forgiveness also. She didn't have an easy life. Uh, she raised four children. Um, we were financially secure, but she went through cancer and um, other things. But it was her nightstand Bible mm. that led me to the Lord. She died suddenly in a, in a drowning accident. And I went to clean out the stuff from her room, and my sister and I, and I came across her Bible. And I took it home. I was... Uh, like six weeks away from giving birth to my first child, which would have been her first grandchild. Oh, I read it cover to cover, and Jesus just came into that bedroom and uh, just sovereignly saved me. Um, so I called her my Jesus with skin on. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <And> she truly was, but yeah. um, I, I love her very much. Mm. So can't wait to see her again. Mm. Thank you. Maybe one or two more, one or two more. Shelly. Get one of these guys to talk here. Hi. Um, my mom was on? Is it on? Yeah, it's on. Um, my mom was a, I'm Shelly Long, and my mom was a very feisty, short woman. And I was born on the 12th of July, but there was a mistake with my birth certificate. And I was real sick after my birth, so we just let it go. And then come time to get my driver's license, um, I showed up at the DMV before they were open and you know, birth certificate in hand on the 12th of July. And uh, the lady says, well, you're here early. You were born on the 15th. And my mother was with me, and all I heard was, oh, no, he wasn't with me. Anybody knows he wasn't with me. So I was blessed, fortunately, to have a, a very loving mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Shelly. That's good. That's good. Thanks, man. One more. <laughs> That's a good try, though. Right over here. Right over here. <laughs> You'll get yours later. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Michael Anthony Manzi II. Um, my mother's right here with me. I want to say all mothers happy Mother's Day, and yes. uh, also, you know, uh, the the shining light that is uh, God in my life is reminded. And I was uh, ignorant to it in my youth, mm. and then my mother she walked in light, and I wasn't ready, fearful. Um, uh, so I had to go through my own walk, and um, I'm really thankful of my mother because I uh, she changed her life around, did great, met a wonderful man. She's moving forward, doing her thing, mm. and I had to go through mine. Now I'm like, I have to live for what she taught me. Her example was, okay, okay, so the world didn't work. Let me try to get back into God, you know, mm. give him the swing. Home run, by the way, Grand Slam. <laughs> 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 so, like, uh, Amen. I see that, and, like, and I was like, you know, you got, like, the, the child rearing, all the troubles and the trials and tribulations that God holds in front of us, and it's, uh, it's amazing to see the overcome through, you know, through God, through Christ, and, like, the spirit is so alive yeah. and just... It's there. It's like a living thing, but it's not physical. It's it's crazy. The spirit overflowing, you know. Yeah. So like, yeah, amen, and hallelujah, you know. And uh, I'm a, uh, I'm just so glad that I got my mom with me. Mm. And uh, you know, recently we had a loss with somebody. Our sister, well, my sister, her daughter, COVID took her, mm. very hard. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's this first Mother's Day. So you know, it's uh, it's tough, but you know, mm. trials and tribulations. Mm. You know, she gone. She Jesus got her now. So we're just moving on through that and like all we can do is just keep on keeping on as Joe yeah. said you know <laughs> Joe said. thank you Mike. So, yeah that's all I have to say thank you happy Mother's Day and God bless you yeah thank you Michael thank you amen wow you know um so wonderful uh, all of us are blessed and there's so many there's so many stories and I, I want you to feel 
the need to restrict yourself. I just want you to delay yourself a little bit. Uh, and then after service, sit and talk. Talk about your moms. Man, what a great thing. Uh, some of us are blessed to have a lot of moms. I'm blessed in a unique way in that I have multiple different kinds of moms. I have my biological mom. I also have a stepmom uh, who's a wonderful person. And, and, and I also have a mother-in-law who I know I've been blessed with a very wonderful mother-in-law. And she's not watching, I don't think, but she's great um, if she is. So, so that was for free because I know she's not watching. So you know it's true because I'm not getting any, any points for that. <laughs> Grandmothers and spiritual mothers, all of us have been impacted by women uh, in our lives. Mother's Day is, is a wonderful time to honor that. But like, uh, like Michael said, it's also a difficult day for some of us. You know, some of us are missing our moms. Some of us uh, didn't have moms that uh, reflected the kind of love that we needed when we were younger. Um, and some of us are mothers, but our children have gone on before us. Uh, and that's hard as well. So I just want to acknowledge the fact that today is a really, really good day. But it's also sort of a reminder of how precious life is, uh, how fragile it is sometimes, um, and how important it is to make sure that the people in your lives especially mothers today, know that you love them and, and that they are important to you and special to you. So make sure that you do that. I'm looking at you three over there because their mom's over there too. I know your mom. So, <laughs> um, But today we're honoring mothers. And we have a little gift and a flower. Uh, uh, when you leave, don't leave without a little flower and a gift because we want to make sure that you get that. But um, I was reading, I was kind of looking as to, you know, what I wanted to share, and I read this quote, it was like a Scottish proverb that said, an ounce of mother is worth a pound of clergy, so <laughs> I'm going I'm to try to keep it brief this morning, um, because I recognize that I cannot compare with the important words that you have received from your mothers, which hopefully they're in your mind, but I do want to look at one little passage, and that's in Isaiah 49, uh, verses 14 through 16. And I want to just read this, and we're just going to talk about it just a second, okay? So let's, I'm going to go ahead and read this. But Zion said, Zion, now Zion, I, I'm not going to stop us too much, but you need context. Zion is the city of God. It, it, it symbolizes Israel. It symbolizes God's people, right? So when it says, but Zion said, it means like God's people. This is all God's people, okay? But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Man, sometimes I feel like that too. This is God's response. Verse 15. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child that she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Verse 16. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. It shouldn't surprise us too much. Can we, can we, I just want to leave up. Can we leave verse 15? I just want to leave verse 15 up there for a minute. It should not surprise us that when Isaiah, who wrote this passage, spoke this passage out, when he was looking for an image of what faithfulness looks like, he went to a mother, a nursing mother. Right? That is the image that he says, this is, God says, this is who I am. I'm like a mother to Israel. I've been married to a mother for nine years. Um, and I've got to watch as she nurses. Now, some women choose not to nurse. Some women can't nurse. That's fine. That's not a, that doesn't make you a mother. Um, but my wife did uh, nurse. She nursed our kids. And I tell you what, you know, I... Definitely, I was there for all three births. I do not envy that process, okay? But nursing was, man, to have that kind of connection with her children at a level that I'm never going to be able to experience. Do you know that when a baby's born, when it's first developing, its range of vision is between 8 and 12 inches, which is exactly the right vision link that you would need if you were nursing um, or giving a bottle also. We are designed to want a mother's love. We're designed so that mothers have a place in our lives. And this is one of the reasons why God says, I'm like a mother. 
a mother who's nursing a baby? Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child that she has born? Even though she may forget, which how many of you know no mother is ever going to forget their child? God says, even if a mother could ever forget her child, I will not forget you. Jesus, God says, I am like a mother who nurtures her children and never forgets who they are. Motherhood is a perfect picture of who God is because his love for you, for us, is exceptional. Mothers have an incredible amount of love for their children. Just like a mother, God can never stop loving us. It's amazing the amount of things that moms can forgive and love us for in spite of ourselves. I'm walking proof of that in my own life. A mother's heart is open to her children, right? Just like a mother searching for her child, God pursues us. Uh, I was reading about how deer, uh, deer when they're fawning, right? A mother deer asks God if she's got to go eat her food, so she puts her fawn down in a thicket and never forgets where the baby is. And she goes out and she eats her food and that kind of thing, comes back and vocalizes that the baby knows it's time to come and nurse and that kind of a thing. Searches her baby out, right? Ensures that her baby is safe and protected. That's how deer operate. How much more are mothers searching us out, ensuring that we're safe and protected? I remember when I was little, I was, uh, I was in elementary school. I don't remember what grade I was in, but I was in elementary school. And it, we were in Seattle. I grew up in Seattle. And um, I remember one winter it snowed. And in Seattle, in Seattle, you can have torrential sideways rain, 60 mile an hour winds, and, and it's, it's as if nothing has even changed, right? People still show up everywhere they are. They get to work on time. They drive at the same speed limit, like there's no difference. But if there's a quarter of an inch of snow on the ground, okay, the whole city shuts down. People don't know how to do the snow, okay? It freaks them out, right? Um, and so it was snowing. I remember it was, it was a snowy day, and we were, um, we'd gone to school, and I don't remember if it was a half day or something like that, but for some reason or other, they were like, all right, let's go home, and and so we all get back on the bus, and it's, it is still somewhat snowing, but there's definitely snow on the ground. And I remember we're driving, the bus is driving away from the elementary school, and they had to go up this hill um, to get to, you know, to get over the hill, and that's where we live. And so the bus is just, it's maybe three blocks from school, and it's driving up this hill. And all of a sudden, there's like this flash of a car uh, going, passing the school bus, and something crazy in the back of my mind says, that's my mom. And, and as the bus reaches the top of the hill, it pulls off to the side of the road and stops. I mean, there was no stop. There was no stop there, right? No kids stop. And I'm like, all right. And I get, pick up my backpack, and lo and behold, my mother steps on the bus, you know. And, uh, you know, I get called to the front, and I get taken off the bus in front of all my friends and that kind of thing. And my mom goes, it is snowing outside. I am not letting my child get on a school bus. <laughs> and like, <laughs> so, <laughs> this is the kind of mom I have. You know, she will endanger an entire school bus full of children so that she could pull off. And I know my mom is very much, I don't care about those other kids, you know. <laughs> if... There was, no ride was offered to anybody else on that, on that bus. You know, she was worried about one child. And if that bus went off a cliff after she, she would not care one lick. You know, so um, that's, that's my mom. Now, guys, that, that is the kind of love that mothers have. It pursues children. You know, it doesn't let things go. Okay. It's the kind of love that says, you can run but I'm going to find you, <laughs> right? You, there is no distance you can make. Um, we read this, this was a favorite childhood. Do you guys know this one? The Runaway Bunny, favorite childhood book of mine. And I think that my mom actually read this to me as a sort of manual um, <laughs> as, to what, as to what would happen to me if I tried to run away. But I love the, I love the pictures, right? You know, you got the bunny that's, he says, I'm, I'm going to become a fish. 
And what does the mom say? If you become a fish, I will become a fisherman, and I will fish for you. And she catches him. And so he says, no, I'm going to be a rock on a mountain. And she says, if, I, if you will be a rock on a mountain, I will be a mountain climber, and I will climb up to where you are. And he says, okay, well, I'm going to be a, a flower in a hidden garden. And she says, if you are a flower in a hidden garden, I will be a gardener. I will come and find you. He says, I will be a bird, and I'll fly away. And she says, if you are a bird and fly away, I will be a tree for you to come home to. Right? I'll become a sailboat and go out on the water. If you're a sailboat, I'll be the wind, and I'll blow you where I want you to go. <laughs> I'm going to become a, a trapeze and artist and go up high on a tightrope. If you become an artist, I will go up with you, and I will be with you. Oh, she says, uh, the, boys, the buddy says, if I will become a little boy, and I'll go running into a house. And she says, if you will be a little boy, and you run into a house, I will be your mother, and I will pick you up, and I will love you. And so what does he say? Shucks, I might as well stay where I am and be your little bunny. <laughs> and so he did. A little story time on Sunday morning. But that's the kind of pursuing love that mothers have. And I want to just uh, make an observation that if God created mothers and if God put love in a mother's heart, I want you to take that and as much as you can, the love that you have as a mother, the love that you've experienced from a mother, if you could take that idea and expand it as far as you could possibly go, that is the kind of love that God has for you. Our mothers learned how to love from God. So if that's the case, then his love must be even greater than theirs. God's love is the kind of love that says, I saw you while you were still in your mother's womb, and I was knitting you together, and I was thinking about you. I was thinking about every single day of your life. A mother's love says, I love you and I want to see your face. And God says, I love you and I see your face every moment of every day. And I look at you and I know how many hairs are on your head. And I know everything about you and I love you still. If we were going to be honest, we'd say maybe if our mothers knew everything about us, maybe they would reduce their love maybe just a little bit. But God never, he knows everything already. And has never stopped loving you, has never stopped pursuing you, has never stopped. His love for you is boundless and immense. Mother's Day should be a time when we look at the women around us and we say, thank you for reflecting God's love back to us. You have done a good job. You have done a really good job of showing us just a little glimpse of how much God loves us. Thank you. God's love never gives up on us. And so this pursuing, this, this, this intensely focused, this almost obsessive love that God has, it, it manifests itself. It takes form. And the form that it takes starts with a mother. Right? It starts with a woman, a young woman, and God sends an angel to a young woman and he says, I want to make you a mother. And I want your baby to be the hope of all people. And my pursuing obsessive love is going to take shape inside of your womb. And when you give birth, you're not just going to give birth to a little baby boy. You're going to give birth to the hope of all humanity. An act of motherhood is the thing that sets God's redemptive love into motion. That action, being a mother, that's how important it is. Listen, it's, it's vital, right? There's an important piece to this world that we're missing. When we, when we denigrate or when we, when we don't value or when we don't lift up the idea of motherhood, God says, motherhood is so important. My plan revolves around a woman becoming a mother. That's exceptional. Women, you are exceptional. 
And whether you're a, a biological mother, you can be a spiritual mother. You can give that love away to somebody. You can pour into somebody and be a part of that. So this boy is birthed, this Jesus is birthed from a woman. He is the embodiment of God's pursuant love for you. And I'm going to invite up, I'm going to invite uh, Chrissy up, the band, come on down. And they're going to, and Debbie, do you want to check downstairs if they want to come up or not? Would you mind? <clears throat> but I want to give you an opportunity. In, in this moment, and I don't want to, um, I'm not making this not about mothers, because I think the whole thing is about mothers. Up. But I, I think it would be a dereliction of my duty if I did not extend to you an opportunity here today to come to terms with the fact that God loves you an exceptional amount and that his love has taken the form of this Jesus. And I challenge you this morning not to change a belief, but to open up your heart. Don't keep God's love at arm's length. Let it come in. And you know what I've noticed about my mother? All of the chatter of the world, whether that's um, about jobs or family or, frankly, a lot of disagreements that we have about the world. In a moment, all those things disappear when she says, I love you. Because for my mom, that love overcomes all those other things. And I think sometimes with God, we say, oh, well, I don't like this piece of the puzzle. I don't like that piece of the puzzle. I don't like, you know, I don't like how the church is working right now. Or I don't like how Christians are behaving on this issue. Can you just for a moment let the chatter die out? Because God loves you. And we can either sit and argue all day and you can keep his love at arm's length or you can just let his love come in and let the chatter deal with itself. And so I'm going to invite you. I'm not going to force anyone, but I want to invite you in this moment. Would you just close your eyes with me? And if this is you today, if you're saying, I want the love of God in my heart, for the first time, for the second time, for the millionth time. If you are saying, Lord, I want to feel your love. You just got to ask him. God is like a mother. When his children come to him, he doesn't say no. And so if you want to just repeat after me silently to yourself, all you got to do is say, God, I want your love. Please fill my heart with your love. Fill me with your love, Lord. I want to be loved by you. That's it. That's all you have to do. Lord, I pray right now for these people, for our people, for our children, for our mothers for the generations of mothers that have come before us. Lord, you have demonstrated your love for humanity through our mothers. Forgive us, God. Forgive us, Lord, because we have not attended well to those gifts that you've given to us. I pray this morning that your goodness would fill the hearts of all people who call on your name, and especially those who are mothers. And Lord, I pray this morning that we would not attend to the divisions and the discussions and the disagreements of this world, but that we would agree and covenant in this place to allow your love into our hearts. 
Thank you for loving us, Lord. Thank you for loving us like a mother loves a child. You've written our names on the palms of your hands. And we are always before you. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. against you. He is for you. Friends, the greatest single thing that we could possibly do 
is to turn our eyes to God and accept the love that he has for us. It's a love which has no limits. It's a love which has no stipulations. It is simply love. And Lord, this morning we accept this love. God, this morning we receive your love. Would you just raise your hands up and say, God, I, I receive your love this morning. Lord, I receive your love this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Let's say it one more time. face upon you. May you make his face shine upon you and give you peace. May you go with the love of God in your life. In the holy name of Jesus to whom all glory and honor are due. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for joining us today. If you are a lady, you do not have to be a quote-unquote mother. If you are a lady, we have carnations for you in the back and some gift cards as just a little thank you because you're an incredible person and we love you so much. Please grab one as you go out. Remember, there's a Bible study tomorrow. There's prayer this Wednesday. Uh, and I hope that you are uh, going to spend some time on the phone with your mom uh, or your children. God bless you guys. God go with you.